Good morning, everyone. If you would turn to your in your prayer book to page one. <clears throat> All mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and all knowingness. May they experience happiness and be separated from suffering. I will quickly establish them in the stage of the most perfect and precious Buddhahood. Thus, until I achieve enlightenment, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. Until death, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. From now on, until this time tomorrow, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. Sentient beings, limitless as the sky, take refuge in the glorious, kind Lama Vajra Dharma, the embodiment of the body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions and the Three Times, source of the 84,000 categories of the teaching and Lord of the Samas. We take refuge in the kind root Lama and lineage Lamas. We take refuge in the deities of the mandalas of the Edoms. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dakas, Dakinis, and Dharma guardians, possessors of the eye of wisdom. Until I attain the heart of enlightenment, I take refuge in all the Buddhas. I take refuge in the Dharma and likewise in the assembly of the Bodhisattvas. 
As the previous Buddhas embraced the enlightened mind and progressed on the Bodhisattva's path, I too, for the benefit of all sentient beings, give birth to Bodhicitta and apply myself to accomplish the stages of the path. Excellent. I take refuge until enlightenment is reached by the merit of generosity and other good deeds. May I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. Sentient beings, boundless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness which is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. <laughs> Deva Tan Deve Jutan Denbai Jorje Dungaratan Dungarai Ke Jutan Deva Jorje Dungarai Mebe Deva Tan Deva Jorje <laughs> Refuge of all sentient beings without exception, divine subjugator of terrifying Mars, together with their hosts of demons, the one who understands all realities without exception exactly as they are, transcendent conqueror together with your disciples, Please come here to this place. The ground is sprinkled with scented water and strewn with flowers. It is adorned with Meru, the supreme mountain, the four continents, and the sun and moon. As a Buddha field, I offer it. May all sentient beings attain the happiness of the Buddha fields. Whatever merit I have gathered through prostrations, offerings, confession, rejoicing, beseeching, and praying, for the sake of the enlightenment of all sentient beings, all this I dedicate. Oh. 
Appearance and existence, I offer the fundamental ground of appearance and existence. I supplicate you to thoroughly liberate the three realms. Please grant your blessings and overturn the depths of samsara. Sublime master, wish fulfilling jewel, crown ornament, the inconceivable, inexpressible mind of the victorious ones, the one endowed with the five wisdoms of omniscience. Gracious one, the embodiment of love, precious protector of beings, I supplicate you from within the essence of mind. Please grant your blessings from within the innate nature. Please bless me that I may realize the Dharmakaya that is beyond intellect, this primordially unborn, completely pure mind, transcendent conqueror, the one thus gone, foe destroyer of afflictive emotions, completely perfected Buddha, endowed with logic and virtue, the one gone to bliss, knower of the world, captain, tamer of beings, the unexcel, teacher of gods and men. I respectfully prostrate, completely touching my head to the stainless feet of the unequaled Shakya king. At the time of your birth, leader of two-legged beings, taking seven steps on this great earth you proclaimed, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise even then, I prostrate. Possessing a body of complete purity, your sublime form is excellent. An ocean of primordial wisdom, you are like a golden mountain. The one whose renown is evident throughout the three worlds, protector of supreme attainment, to you I prostrate. To you who are endowed with the supreme marks, whose face is like an immaculate moon. To you, the one with a complexion like gold, I prostrate. A flawless one such as you, among the three levels of existence, is most exquisite. Unparalleled, omniscient one, to you I prostrate. Supreme among humans, captain of those to be tamed, the one thus gone who severs the all-binding fetters, who with senses pacified is utterly pacified and skilled in peace. To that one, the one who dwelled at Shravasti, I prostrate. Refuge endowed with great impassion, totally omniscient one who indicates the way, ground basis for oceans of merit and qualities, I prostrate to the one thus gone. The pure cause free from attachments, the virtue that liberates from the lower realms, the altogether supreme ultimate truth to the pacifying dharma I prostrate. Having been liberated, they also reveal the path to liberation. Thoroughly respectful of the three higher trainings, they are a field of sublime qualities. To the Sangha, I also prostrate. And to page nine. Can be 
I prostrate to the youthful Manjusri, to those in the worlds of the ten directions, however many there are, all the lions among humans who appear during the three times, to all of them without exception, I pay homage with respectful body, speech, and mind. The force of my aspiration prayer for excellent conduct brings all the victorious ones directly to mind. Bowing down with bodies as numerous as atoms in the realms, I prostrate to all the victorious ones. In a single atom, there are Buddhas as numerous as atoms, each residing in the midst of their sons and daughters. Like that, I imagine the whole Dharmatattu completely filled with victorious ones. To those with oceans of inexhaustible praiseworthy qualities, with sounds containing oceans of tones of melodic speech, I express the qualities of all the victorious ones. I praise all the Sugatas. With the finest flowers, the finest garlands, music, ointments, supreme parasols, supreme lamps, and the finest incense, 
I make offerings to the victorious ones with the finest cloths, supreme scents, and fine powders equal to Mount Meru, all displayed in supreme and magnificent ways. I make offerings to those victorious ones. With vast and unsurpassable offerings, I venerate all the victorious ones. Through the power of faith and excellent conduct, I prostrate and offer to the victorious ones. Whatever negative actions I have performed with body, speech, and also mind, overpowered by desire, aggression, and stupidity, I confess each and every one of them. I rejoice in everyone's merit, the victorious ones of the Ten Directions, the Bodhisattvas, the Pratyeka Buddhas, those in training, those beyond training, and all beings. I request the protectors, the lamps of the worlds of the Ten Directions, who passing through the stages of awakening, attain Buddhahood beyond attachment, to turn the unsurpassable Dharma wheel. I supplicate with my palms joined together those who intend to demonstrate nirvana to remain for kalpas as numerous as atoms in the realms for the welfare and happiness of all beings. I dedicate whatever slight virtue is accumulated through prostrating, offering, confessing, rejoicing, requesting and supplicating to enlightenment. Please turn the wheel of the Dharma of the two <coughs> vehicles and their combination according to the dispositions and mental capacities of sentient beings. <laughs> So, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, actually, we are uh, like uh, the sad news. Uh, so, we are the uh, uh, special teacher, Andrew uh, Mbuche. Uh, pass this morning. Oh. 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 So, so, yeah. So, this actually we uh, kind of you see impermanence. Uh, so, supposed to come November here. But recently he said he's not feeling well. He had all the, the schedule he cancelled. Uh, so anyway, so this morning uh, passed. Uh, so actually, we really said so because we, after the the cultural revelation, so this uh, kind of this start like Buddha Dharma. So we have like all said the Tibet. Actually, a couple of teachers. Like, for instance, of course, Holiness Chetan Rinpoche, and then uh, like Wantu Rinpoche, and Tongden uh, Rinpoche. So, like, we mostly uh, transmissions, improvements that come from those people. So, these big uh, teachings. Uh, in Dugunkaju, in Densa Changchobling, the men, you know, Changchobling. I think before, I'm not sure, maybe 90, something 1991. But the big teaching is the opening ceremony, Densa Changchobling complete finish. And the opening ceremony, so that time is one month teachings. Uh, so that time is men, the gi teachers like Wang Trinbuche, he mostly did transmissions and uh, also Dong De Rinpoche. And then, uh, yes, of course, Holiness Chia Tsang Rinpoche and also Holiness Chung Tsang Rinpoche. So that's in Tugung Kaju lineage. Of course, that time is Dalai Lama uh, there. Dalai Lama, he stays at eight days a lot of teaching and so on. 
And then after that, uh, we are in the three year retreat. Uh, so during <coughs> the three year retreat, so Nancy, uh, Nancy, uh, seventy, no, no, Nancy seventies. What is Nancy? Seventy seven. Nancy seven, yeah. So this Nancy, Nancy. So I think maybe a nineteen nineteen eight or nine, nine or nine, I think Jill and Master and Santi then I got to chamber here. So nineteen eighty seven. So nineteen eighty seven, big teachings, one month teaching, transmissions, uh, empowerment. So that time also, so main teacher, the one to Rimbuche. So he has the all, he has the transmissions. Uh, he was young and as well Don Dan Mbuchi, another Kimbo at Dodo Rinpoche too. And then, so 2000, end of the 99, 2000, the big teachings, and wrote that time is on to Rinpoche giving. And then that time is the Ngarchen Rinpoche too. Ngarchen Rinpoche give the mostly, the Dharma protector employments. Uh, so anyway, that's a, so we are sort of like uh, the Dugunkaju lineage, sort of like couple, not many teachers. So, so I want to remember uh, sort of one of them. So, so I'm going to today uh, for oh, prayers and for him. So we first we're going to, uh, we call that butter lamp or my memorial. And then after that, uh, we're going to uh, King of Aspiration. We, I think we do point we do that Tibet and you guys the English. And then uh, and the two point we do usually this one really uh, most special uh, like dedication uh, from the Lord Jitian Songong. So we do that. So then after that, the two point. Um, Teachings start. Okay. Okay.
The tea lights, but they actually made um, real butter lamps this morning. Okay, so maybe first the English. Hmm. Ah. Uh, this mass of lamp made by of precious materials be equal to the realms of a tricilio chasm. In the center is the boundless sea of oil. May the wick rise like the king of mountains. Amidst all the Buddhas of the ten directions, may one hundred million lamps shine forth. May their light blaze forth in all the realms from the summit of the existence of a Michi hell below, overwhelming the darkness of ignorance with light. May, may I see the faces of the Buddhas of the ten directions. Om Vajra Eloki Ah Hum Vajra. The lamp vessel, the vast space of the all bases of migratory beings, is filled with the oil of the pure expanse of Dharmatatu. I shall set ablaze the wick of the precious mind of awakening with the fire of the five spontaneously present bodies of the conqueror. This is the great light of the self arisen primordial wisdom. I shall offer this to the gurus, yidam deities, yakinis, and dharma protectors. May this solve er errors and may my grant me the supreme and ordinary attainments. Om Guru Deva Dakini Dharmapala Sapariwara Alokam Pratitsa Soha. Om Guru Deva Dakini Dharmapala Sapariwara Aloke Pratitsa Soha. Om Guru Deva Dakini Dharma Pala Sapariwara Alokam Pratitsa Soha. Ima Ho, I offer this amazing, splendid, luminous lamp to the thousand Buddhas of the fortunate eon and the Edom deities, Dakinis, and Dharma protectors in all of the vast Buddha lands of the ten directions and to all the assembly of deities of the mandalas. May all sentient beings in the sordid states of the six realms in their present lives as well as in all lives to come, see all the Buddha lands clearly and be inseparable from the Lord Amitabha himself. May the glory of the three jewels, three roots and assembly deities reach heights of unsurpassing. May this prayer uttered by the power of truth be fulfilled for this very moment with our blessings. Soha. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Chan 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 Chan
Aspiration prayers, the aspiration for noble, excellent conduct. I pay homage to the noble Manjusri, to those in the worlds of the ten directions, however many there are, all the lions among humans who appear during the three times, to all of them without exception, I pay homage with respectful body, speech, and mind. The force of my aspiration prayer for excellent conduct brings all the victorious ones directly to mind. Bowing down with bodies as numerous as atoms in the realms, I prostrate to all the victorious ones. In a single atom, there are Buddhas as numerous as atoms, each residing in the midst of their sons and daughters. Like that, I imagine the whole Dharmatatu completely filled with victorious ones. To those with oceans of inexhaustible praiseworthy qualities, with sounds containing oceans of tones of melodic speech. I express the qualities of all the victorious ones. I praise all the Sugatas with the finest flowers, the finest garlands, music, ointments, supreme parasols, supreme lamps, and the finest incense. I make offerings to the victorious ones with the finest cloths, supreme scents, and fine powders equal to Mount Meru all displayed in supreme and magnificent ways, I make offerings to the victorious ones. With vast and unsurpassable offerings, I venerate all the victorious ones. Through the power of faith and excellent conduct, I prostrate and offer to the victorious ones. Whatever negative actions I have performed with body and speech and also mind, overpowered by desire, aggression, and stupidity, I confess each and every one of them. I rejoice in everyone's merit, the victorious ones of the Ten Directions, the Bodhisattvas, the Pratyeka Buddhas, those in training, those beyond training, and all beings. I request the protectors, the lamps of the worlds of the Ten Directions, who, passing through the stages of awakening, attain Buddhahood beyond attachment, to turn the unsurpassable Dharma wheel. 
I supplicate with my palms joined together those who intend to demonstrate nirvana to remain for kalpas as numerous as atoms in the realms for the welfare and happiness of all beings. I dedicate whatever slight virtue is accumulated through prostrating, offering, confessing, rejoicing, requesting, and supplicating to enlightenment. I make offerings to all the past Buddhas and those residing in the worlds of the Ten Directions. May those who have not appeared quickly fulfill their intentions and passing through the stages of awakening appear as Buddhas. May the realms of the Ten Directions, however many, be completely pure and vast. May they be filled with Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who have gone to sit before the powerful Bodhi tree. May all beings throughout the Ten Directions, however many they may be, always have happiness, be freely from illness, and may all beings be in harmony with the aims of the Dharma and achieve what they hope for. May I perform the conduct of awakening and remember my lives during all states. In all my successive lives from birth to death, may I always be a renunciate. Following the victorious ones, may I train, bringing excellent conduct to perfection and engage in pure, stainless moral conduct, which never lapses and is free from faults. In the languages of gods, the languages of nagas and yakshas, in the languages of kumandas and humans, in however many languages of beings there may be, may I teach the Dharma. With gentleness, may I exert myself in the paramitas. May I never forget bodhicitta. May all wrongdoing, whatever obscures, be thoroughly purified. May I be liberated from karma, kleshas, and the work of Mars, and act for all beings in the world like a, like a lotus to which water does not cling, like the sun and moon unhindered in space. Throughout the directions and reaches of the realms, may the suffering of the lower states be pacified. May all beings be placed in happiness, May all beings be benefited. May I bring awakened conduct to perfection, engage in conduct that harmonizes with beings, teach excellent conduct and perform these throughout all future kalpas. May I continuously be with those whose actions accord with my own. May our conduct and aspirations of body, speech and mind be the same. May I always meet with friends who wish to benefit me those who teach excellent conduct, and may I never displease them. May I always directly see the victorious ones, directors surrounded by bodhisattvas, in future kalpas without tiring, may I make vast offerings to them. May I retain the genuine dharma of the victorious ones and cause the appearance of awakened conduct, training in excellent conduct, May I act in this way throughout future kalpas. When circling in all my existences, may I develop inexhaustible merit and wisdom and become an inexhaustible treasury of methods, knowledge, samadhi, liberation, and virtues. In a single atom, there are realms as numerous as all atoms. In those realms resell infinite Buddhas in the midst of bodhisattvas. Beholding them, may I perform awakened conduct. <laughs> like that in all directions, on the breadth of just a hair, there are oceans of Buddhas, as many as in the three times, and oceans of realms. May I act and be engaged with them for oceans of kalpas. A single instance of a Buddha's speech is a voice endowed with oceans of qualities. It has the pure qualities of the melodic speech of the victorious ones, and is the melodic speech that accords with the inclinations of all beings. May I always be engaged with the Buddha's speech. May I be engaged through the power of my mind in the inexhaustible melodic speech of the victorious ones appearing in the three times. Return the Dharma like a wheel. As all future kalpas are penetrated, may I also penetrate them instantly. May I be engaged in and penetrate in each part of an instant, as many kalpas are in in three times. May I see instantly those lions among humans appearing in the three times. May I always be engaged in their sphere of experience.
through the power of illusion-like liberation. May I produce in the single atom all the arrays of realms there are in the three times. May I be engaged with the arrays of the Buddha realms in all directions always. Those lamps of the world who have not yet appeared will gradually awaken, turn the Dharma wheel, and demonstrate Nirvana, the final peace. May I go into the presence of those protectors. Through the power of swift miracles, the power of the yana, the door, the power of conduct endowed with excellent qualities, the power of all pervasive love, the power of virtuous merit, the power of wisdom free from attachments, and the powers of knowledge, methods, and samadhi, may I perfectly accomplish the power of awakening. May I purify the power of karma, conquer the power of kleshas, render the power of Mars powerless, and perfect the power of excellent conduct. May I purify oceans of realms, liberate oceans of beings, behold oceans of dharma, realize oceans of wisdom, purify oceans of conduct, perfect oceans of aspiration prayers, offer to oceans of Buddhas, and act without weariness throughout oceans of kalpas. All the victorious ones who appear in the three times awaken into enlightenment through the conduct of various aspirations, prayers for egg and conduct. May I perfect all of these. The eldest son of the victorious ones is called Samantha Bhadra by name. I dedicate all this virtue that I may act with skill similar to his. May I also be equal to him in his skill and excellent dedications for pure body, speech, and mind, pure conduct, and pure realms. May I act according to the aspiring prayers of Manjusri in order to perform excellent virtuous actions. Not tiring throughout future kalpas, may I perfect these activities. May my conduct be without measure. May my qualities also be measureless. Remaining within conduct without measure, may I send out emanations. Sentient beings extend as far as the limits of space. May my aspiration prayers extend as far as the limits of their karma and kleshas. Though someone adorns with precious jewels the infinite realms of the ten directions and offers these to the Buddhas or offers the supreme happiness of gods and men for kalpas as numerous as atoms in the realms, the genuine merit of someone who hears this king of dedications, who is inspired towards supreme awakening and gives rise to faith in it is more supreme. Whoever makes this aspiration prayer for excellent conduct will be free from the lower realms and free from negative friends. They will see Amitabha soon, acquire all benefits and be sustained in happiness. With all of this, their life will go well. Before long, they will become just like Samantabhadra. Whatever has been done through the power of not knowing, all evil, even the five acts of immediate consequence, will be quickly purified by those who recite this excellent conduct. They will possess wisdom, beauty, and the signs, be of good family with fine complexion. They will not be overpowered by Mars or Tertikas. The three worlds will make offerings to them. They will soon go before the Papaji, and from there they will sit to benefit beings, awaken into enlightenment, turn the Dharma wheel, and subdue all Maras and their hordes. The full ripening for those who are involved with, teach, or recite this aspiration prayer for excellent conduct is known only by the Buddhas. It is supreme enlightenment. I dedicate all this virtue following and emulating the warrior Manjusri, who is omniscient, as is Samantabhadra, with dedications praised as supreme by the victorious ones who appear in the three times, I dedicate all my roots of virtue toward excellent conduct. When the time of death comes for me, may all my obscurations vanish. Seeing Amitabha directly, may I go to his realm of Sukhavati. Having gone there, may I actualize all these aspiration prayers, fulfill them completely, and benefit beings as long as worlds exist. 
May I be born within a beautiful lotus in that excellent and joyous realm of the victorious one. And from the victorious one, Amitabha, directly, may I receive a prophecy. Having received this prophecy there, may I benefit all beings in the ten directions through the power of it, my mind with many billions of emanations. Through whatever slight virtue I have accumulated by making this aspiration prayer for excellent conduct, may the virtue of the aspiration prayer for all beings be accomplished instantly by the definite and genuine merit attained through dedicating the aspiration prayer for excellent conduct. May all beings drowning in the rivers of sufferings reach the place of Amitabha. May this king of aspiration prayers bring about the supreme aim and benefit for all infinite beings. Completing this scripture adorned by Samantabhadra, may the lower realms be empty. This completes the king of aspiration prayers, the aspiration for excellent conduct. Tanda Chen 
Uh, I think maybe now it's his teaching. Yeah. Tanga Zaka, Tobasan Cutter Meto Beman, Rasina, Dam Nam Jeuri, Tene, Dam Chung Gogumarwa, Dam Gogumarwa, or Tena Gichi, Mato Sam Monish in the road. Chung Go, Sam Kurango, La Chung Go, your Marex, Tina, Tanazo, Tata Nero Tonto, your Marek Vijayan, Tomato Mare, Metoch in Sanga Gene, Soleva, Sanga Gene, Sole Sentate, Sisla. The my inner tender yomara, trying to meet me, Yang Smith. Jerezam the combatis, the Jerezam the congoris. Gomba my combat, so so complete chas on the Gomia Jet of Gerida, Yan, Yant Gomtoma, the Gom Jagera. Now they said this is new gomati, Kumimi for chatty, complete the park corner, the Gom Jat of Maris. That at the sitting of the Gom Gom Yamanati, Jay, the Gom, though the gender, so take on for chat, the so Gom take on the Yawa source of charm. What's <laughs> Non, ma giù, ho sentito un tango, ma 
So picking up where we left off yesterday, we were in the section of um, the two categories. So chamata without a support, um, employing the methods of tightening and loosening. Uh, and so now um, having gone through the methods of tightening, uh, then now we're on the section of loosening. Uh, and so it says in the text, um, so maintaining the posture and gaze as before, so establishing uh, the posture <clears throat> and allowing the mind to naturally settle. It says, let your awareness be relaxed and released in its natural state. In the dimension of thinking of nothing, in the dimension of thinking nothing, without being distracted from this dimension, that's an interesting term, dimension. Um, I think state is kind of what it means. Um, what does it say in the jam? State, yeah. As you maintain constant mindfulness and experience of mind being vividly, an experience of mind being vividly pristine will dawn. Um, so it is important here to um, in allowing the mind to just naturally settle, but sustaining the clarity, undistracted clarity of awareness, um, not allowing the mind to kind of sink into a state of cloudiness or torpor. So then it says, it is said, the nature of mind is unelaborated, like the dimension <laughs> of space. So the word space is used here because like the space that is completely free <coughs> from proliferation, from all elaboration, it is without boundary or center. And you can't say that it exists, but you also can't say that it doesn't exist. Um, so space is, is there, and yet it, it also there's nothing there. Um, so it, you can't say that, say that it exists, you can't say that it does not exist. And so mind is also like that. Um, then it says like an ocean. So the mind is like an ocean. If you think about an ocean at the very depths, no matter um, how much wind there might be on the surface and the waves might get really strong, really um, big on the surface, um, but at the depths, the, the ocean just remains completely unmoving. Um, and so it, it, it is similar um, for, the, for the mind when abiding within the recognition of the natural state, even though there may be the movement of all sorts of arisings or thoughts um, or waves um, at the depths that essence remains unmoved. Um, and so then it says it's like a crystal or flower. So a crystal is like, com it's completely clear so the, a crystal has like no color or characteristics itself other than clarity. However, if you put a color behind it, like a cloth, you know, set it upon a cloth that's like red or yellow or what have you, then the crystal takes up the color of that cloth. Um, but the crystal itself is, is clear. It's, a, it's the nature of clarity. Um, and so then it is like a lotus. Uh, because like a lotus that arises out of the mud, it is born from the mud, and yet uh, it is unstained by the mud. Um, so this beautiful flower blossoms out of the mud, but um, without any uh, fault, without any stain um, it, uh, uh, from the mud, uh, like it, it cannot stick to it. Um, and then, uh, so in the same way, the mind, the essence of mind is completely stainless. Um, no matter how thick the temporary obscurations may be, the mind itself um, is without any stain, it's without any flaw. It's just the fact that we don't see the essence. Um, so it is covered over by the obscurations of ignorance or unawareness, um, but it, the essence itself never changes. The essence itself is never stained or tainted by the temporary obscurations. And um, so then it says, it is awake. Um, I think the other translation says it is vivid. Um, and so this um, vivid uh, wakefulness uh, is a, a, a quality, a natural quality of the true nature of mind that is understood through practice. <coughs> um, it is neither, it is naked and clear. 
Um, and so when there is no distraction there, when um, and there it is neither, or I think it is naked and clear also we described in a similar way to the vi being vivid. Um, and uh, it is neither to be focused on nor distracted from. Um, so you don't need to intently focus upon it, but there's not, so there's nothing to be done other than recognize it and to just, um, refrain from becoming distracted, to sustain non-distraction, that is the only thing. Um, it is not to be distracted from, uh, that there is nothing also to like latch on to. Um, and so it is a matter of, it says, accustom yourself to this as much as possible. Um, so you are probably familiar with the phrase, um, it is not so much uh, meditation as it is actually habituation. So in Tibetan, this is a play on words because the words are very similar. Um, but meditation itself, the meaning is that the, the act, the, the um, practice of meditation itself is actually habituation. Um, and so it requires um, dedication. It says, thus observe um, your experiences and meditate uh, until stability arises. But it says, accustom yourself to this as much as possible. So um, if you just meditate a little bit, uh, then you won't really develop a strong um, propensity, a strong karmic imprint for meditation. The habituation won't go very deep. So it requires real dedication, real consistent uh, effort, um, and meditating again and again with dedication, and then eventually, um, the imprint becomes deeply established. One develops this meditation through habituation. Well, <laughs> So that's a much of being on a semi-in, but you know, I will take it on like this. Um, so now we'll meditate for a little bit. Um, and this time we'll be meditating just just by resting um, in like an unelaborated awareness um, without any specific support other than the awareness itself. Um, and if you find that you're starting to get sleepy, um, then you practice employing this method of tightening. If you find that you have a lot of discursiveness or thoughts arise, then practice the method of um, loosening. Um, so the main thing is just to, to remain in a state that's without a lot of conceptual proliferation and that is undistracted.
So then um, we go, the next section then becomes the section of insight or special insight. Um, so the, so the, um, with tightening and loosening that concludes the section of shamatha or calm abiding. Um, so now insight or vipassana, maintain the body posture, the key physical points as before, but now focus your gaze straight ahead into space with your awareness slightly sharpened let your mind be relaxed and released in its natural state. Oh, that is the song to what in a same lane, maybe more like Jere to a same demo with Jinja to run labor doors. Oh, that's the same chicken, so so come down there. That's the same thing more of a country door. So 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 yahoo dago is. Oh, that's a dago, you said it. Um, uh, this is that. あ、先生も準備 我在这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里呢,这里
um, I pray again and again that you may realize um, this natural state um, and, and continue to supplicate until um, the realization dawns, until you really realize or understand. Um, <clears throat> so as it says then, this is calm abiding in one, this is, yeah, this is calm abiding in this dimension. The nature of mind is ineffable. Um, so it is kind of, I think the other one was curious about the other translation here. Um, before that, what does it say? Okay, thank you. Um, so, in the dimension, so as also what, what James read is an alternate translation um, by John, John Sorbich. Um, the nature of mind is ineffable. It cannot be thought about or described in a certain way, but it appears to be a clear and unceasing mind, pristine, vivid, and nakedly clear. It is to be seen by not seen. So it is, um, it is, there's nothing to be, there, it is seen um, by not seeing. Uh, it is experienced by not experience. Um, it is beyond uh, thought, uh, expression, um, thought and expression. There's something you are confident or certain about. Nonetheless, it is ineffable. This is special insight. So, you know, there are these ways that it is um, explained in the text, you know, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to investigate. Um, but if you too much kind of leave it at this kind of conceptual understanding of, you know, these are the questions you should ask, and this is what you should try to find. Um, that That is not really, um, you know, it has to be something that's kind of natural and spontaneous through your own meditation. It's really something that has to, a process that has to happen in your in your own practice. So in your own practice, when the mind becomes really stable and able to abide, and then you turn that investigative sort of just dropping in that that inquiry that investigation the curiosity just really looking how is it how is the mind and examining for yourself in your own meditation um, that's really the only way to come to some understanding if you can't really come to under any understanding if if you're holding on to some um, conceptual idea based on what we find in the books Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. 
And so then it says, um, so there's the um, quote, the Sarahare Lagimbe. Great, but the great Bra Brahmanas has said, focusing closely on the Guru's words, if one obediently strives, na Brahmana, there is no doubt this will culminate in the co-emergence. It has no color, attributes, no words or analogies. Um, so he said, you know, this is pointing to the fact that it really is beyond um, uh, a thought, it is beyond, ex it's beyond concepts, it's beyond expression. Um, there is, uh, it, it, I simply recognize but cannot speak of it, like a young girl's pleasure in her heart, to whom can this sublime Lord be told? Um, so, I'm more curious about that. Yeah, go for it. Um, so when it comes to um, understand or explaining the ultimate meaning, there's nobody who can like completely describe or perfectly explain. Um, this realization of the ultimate meaning. Um, it, you can't, it, it's, it, it, words just uh, don't, um, just can't do it justice. There's no way to really explain with words. It's beyond um, the objects of words. Um, and so it, it really is something that can only be uh, understood directly by each um, individual personally in their own practice. Um, and when it is understood, it is a very clear understanding. Um, so the only thing to do is to continue practicing, and little by little, this um, understanding may dawn. So then it says, uh, this very nature of mind that is pristine and vivid, free from the extremes of arising, ceasing, and abiding, is called Mahamudra, as well as the truth body. So this important point of it being um, beyond the extremes of arising, um, uh, ceasing, or departing, uh, or dwelling, or abiding. Um, and it is also when we speak of the Dharmakaya, um, this is, is what is being referred to. Mahamudra um, itself is, is the Dharmakaya. Uh, Mm-hmm. 
So um, then it says, the utterly non-abiding Tantra of suchness says, uh, it is Mahamudra. Um, so whether we call, uh, there are so many different names that we can use to refer to this nature, whether we call it the true nature of mind, whether we call it the, uh, the uh, Mahamudra, um, it is without or the, any of the other um, um, uh, synonyms. Uh, it is free from stains, uh, so it is completely unstained. Uh, there's no way, um, like the defilements don't touch it, don't alter it in any way. It, there, it has nothing to negate and nothing to establish. Um, <clears throat> so, so, oh, sorry, before with um, it is unstained, he was saying um, the nature, you know, it's just a matter of recognizing or not recognizing. So we speak of the stains or defilements, but what that really is, is just simply a not seeing. It isn't actually that there is anything that is altering or contaminating the mind itself. It, it's just that there is the <clears throat> block of ignorance that prevents one from actually seeing it as it as it truly is. Um, so uh, if if it is not seen, it is not realized, and because of the presence of ignorance, and yet its essence is always there, and it is never uh, stained. And there is nothing um, in the essence itself. There is nothing to be rejected. There is nothing to be taken out of it or removed. Um, there's also nothing to be established, nothing to be added. Um, <clears throat> it is completely primordially protected, perfected uh, within its own essence. It is never found by paths and anecdotes. Um, so this uh, innate nature um, is not something that, you know, once it is realized, there is no way to say, oh, this is the way, this is the path, um, and this is the, the thing, the, the way to avoid, um, because it, it, the, the, nat the innate nature itself is already complete with all of the enlightened qualities. There is um, no antidote to apply. Um, there is no particular path um, to follow. Um, it is the body of all the Buddhas. Um, and so it is the um, it is endowed with all of the qualities of uh, Buddhahood, all of the um, kayas and wisdoms, uh, and it is uh, that is what is referred to as the the Buddha nature, the Tathagata Garbha, which is the essence of all Buddhas. Um, <clears throat> it is the foundation of all qualities. Um, and so this is, again, this is the root of all qualities. All the qualities are primordially perfected within this natural essence, and it is spontaneously present on its own. Um, it isn't something that is uh, created. Um, and so also, as Jetson Milarepa says, um, the... Uh, um, the inwardly, like internally, the internal movement of the mind, um, the sort of this, uh, what it seems like is being referred to as the stream, the stream of proliferation, the, the movement of the mind, 
um, is consciousness. Um, when it is not realized, it is ignorance. Um, and it is the basis, the foundation of karma, of all karma and afflictive emotions. But if it is realized um, for what it actually is, um, if there is realization, um, then it becomes uh, intrinsic, the primordial awareness, the pr primordial, um, primordial wisdom of intrinsic awareness. Um, and all of the wholesome qualities are there, um, fully perfected, originally or primordially perfected. Tendor, so then it goes on to say, as this very na naked nature of mind that is cognizant and empty is the definitive and absolute triple gem, as well as the mantras and mandalas and so on. So, um, the kind of final meaning or ultimate meaning of the three jewels um, is this essence of awareness itself. Um, uh, that refuge is what leads to the end point of that refuge is leading to the realization um, of this absolute nature, the true nature of the mind. Um, likewise, all of the methods, all of the skillful methods of secret mantras, mantra, the mantras and mandalas and so on, um, so, for instance, the, all of these um, skillful means of drawing mandalas and, and so forth, these are also meant to direct one to the realization of the true nature of mind. Um, and then, as it says, the victory, and so, so the essence, the true meaning of, of those mandalas and mantras is there um, intrinsic within the nature of the mind itself. The victory of non-duality says, the glories possessed by the triple gem are completely present in the primordial self-awareness alone. This shows the way of awakening that bestows bliss in one's mind stream. Nehavaja Tandra says, it is, mantra it is mantra recitations, it is austerity. <coughs> it is burning generosity or it is fire puja um, it is the beings in the mandala uh, and the chief of the mandala in brief everything is reflection contained within the mind even the three bodies are present in a current moment of awareness truth body or dharmakaya is its nature which does not exist in any form complete enjoyment body or sambhogakaya is its unceasing radiance an emanation body <laughs> or, oh, let's go. sorry i'm going too far <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now he read it, so I'll read it again. Um, even the three bodies are present in a current moment, or the three kayas are present in a, three, in a current moment of awareness. The dharmakaya is its nature, which does not exist in any form. Um, the sambhogakaya is its unceasing radiance, and nirmanakaya is the union of both, indivisible and abiding nowhere. And then the victory of non-duality says basically the same thing he said, uh, which is unborn is the dharmakaya, unceasing is the sambhogakaya, 
uh, abiding nowhere is the nirmanakaya. Thus is the way of the it, it, thus the way of indivisibility is shown. Oh, then it is here. So, then the same new mass, same new mass. And that also, ah, yet the machine part of the new mass, same old word, new old new mass. Then you run me back. You run me back. Last year, new mass. What the new mass? The energy jibi. Long leg, long sentence. What the energy jibas? Wait, what ตนนี้นิมิตนำจารุสังเจกุญเจกงปันเดนเนตงเนอิงเจยิมิยิวะเซมจิงโมโวเจกเซวะตระวาสโลชะนะยิวะเซมจิวะเซมจิงโมโว
这些东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我做的东西现在是你让我
the this essence, this natural intrinsic awareness itself and mindfulness of that is never lost so that it just becomes an unbroken continuity of undistracted awareness. Sure, <laughs> Sorry, I get an itch and it just won't. It, I can't stop. <laughs> okay, draw chop. Nyendo samla das. Draw vada. Chaa san lang ba ran nyeo nyeo ba ran do pan do ga ro. Draw chaa nyendo samla das. Tun san mi be ge jo rin. Sa tun san Tun san mi be ge jo rin zong do. Wa de jo nan nam jin. Jo nan nam jin draw chaa nyendo si ke ro. Jonathanabitamayu <laughs> Siet <clears throat> so then as it, it says during the four activities in the dimension or in the state of undistracted constant mindfulness um, you essentially hear it saying you sustain the um, unbroken continuity of awareness so you're um, uh, without any interruption you uh, sustain this um, mindfulness um, of the natural state without becoming distracted. And then whatever thoughts or concepts that arise, um, they're, they're recognized. Um, so there is not um, any possibility for non-recognition non -recognition there. Um, so there's recognition, but there is no fixation. So as Gampopa has said, like anything whatsoever can arise, um, but there is not any clinging to anything. Whatever it is that arises, there's no, there's no holding on, there's no grasping there. And yet anything um, like the full possibility or scope of arisings can occur, um, but there is no sticking, there is no grasping. Um, and so during the path of activity, uh, the, the, Instruction is to maintain mindful awareness 
um, and to uh, recognize whatever it is um, that uh, arises in the mind. Um, so as Milarepa has said, um, while walking, um, standing, uh, sitting, or lying down, um, uh, the only thing to do is to sustain um, the recognition of the true nature of mind. Um, and when one practices in this way, um, there's no such thing as sessions and um, post, like sessions and in between sessions or meditation and post meditation. Um, this is the, the practice um, that is free of such designations. Um, <clears throat> so then as it says, uh, as you manage to recognize whatever thoughts um, that, they are, that arise, they dissipate like drops of rain or snowflakes um, falling into the sea. Um, so then there, again, there is no um, sort of sticking, whatever concepts, whatever movement, whatever thoughts in the mind that, that occur, um, they just like snowflakes hitting kind of the warm surface of the water, they just dissolve, they, they dissolve upon arising um, and they don't do any harm, they don't create any um, distraction because one is able to sustain a recognition. Um, and so then as it says, um, thus, when mindfulness is maintained for an extended time, the awareness of clarity and emptiness becomes utterly naked, even during the four activities. This is called the experience of spontaneous abiding with no deliberate attempt um, to let it abide. Um, and so then one reaches a point uh, after through much habituation where there's not even any m effort needed to sustain non-distraction. Non-distraction is simply um, the natural way of abiding. What is it? Uh, oh. mm, Guru Mbuchi. Guru Youth so also, um, Guru Rinpoche has said, um, without anticipating um, the arising of thoughts or future thoughts, um, without um, kind of anticipating or, or um, yeah, the, the arising of future thoughts and not following after thoughts that have arisen, um, allowing the movement of the mind to just be rela released in its own place, um, all becomes liberated within the Dharmakaya. Um, and so with that, uh, we can break for lunch. already said. So our kind sponsor today, uh, both uh, the kind sponsor and the kind um, cook, uh, actually two cooks, so Tsultrum and Dorje have uh, very kindly prepared us all lunch. Um, so we'll, I'm assuming it will be set up uh, where we usually set up there under the, the breezeway. Thank you. Oh yeah, dedication, sorry. Okay, so we'll do this short dedication prayers on page 24. By the virtues collected in the three times by myself and all beings in samsara and nirvana, and by the innate root of virtue, may I and all beings quickly attain unsupported, perfect, complete, precious, enlightenment. May the teachings of the great Drakumpa Ratna Shri, who is omniscient, Lord of the Dharma, Master of Interdependence, 
continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.